Hi, welcome back to WFP Reviews. Looking at classic British productions you should see or see again. This time, we look at an early movie directed by the legendary David Lean, 1944's This Happy Breed. It was one of four collaborations between Lean and Noel Coward, and one that's definitely worth watching. Based on a successful play by Coward, this happy breed follows the fortunes of a middle-class London family between the wars, starting when it moves into a new home in 1919. The starting strength of the movie is Coward's wonderful ear for dialogue and his gift for creating believable characters that you grow to care about. Marriage is a bit different, you know, from just having a bit of fun. Yes, I expect it is. Women aren't all the same, you know, not by any manner of means. Some of them don't care what happens so long as they have a good time. Marriage isn't important to them, beyond having the ring and being Mrs. Whatever it is. But your mother wasn't that sort, and I don't think Phyllis is either. Watching the film again, I found the family so well drawn that it made me dig into Coward's own background. And while he was known for clever plays and pithy songs about the upper classes, Coward himself came from a middle class family with three children, similar to the one you'll see in the film. His father was a struggling piano salesman, while his mom was the daughter of a Royal Navy captain. And this surely impacted home life scenes in Coward's naval film In Which We Serve, another collaboration with Lean. This happy breed follows a family's ups and downs, its triumphs and tragedies, and the impact of major national events. What makes it so watchable is the depth and believability of all those very characters, expertly acted and wonderfully written by Coward. The film stars Robert Newton in probably his most grounded role as the father, Frank Gibbons. Frank has returned from the trenches to a good job with a tourist company. Newton later played the vicious Bill Sykes in Lean's Oliver Twist, and is best known for his pirate antics as Long John Silver in Treasure Island. I'd known Newton for those showier roles, so it was great to see his believable depth as a man raising a family and honestly speaking his mind. Co-starring as Frank's wife Ethel is the wonderful Celia Johnson. She was a regular in Lean Coward films and best known for Brief Encounter. Ethel really runs the family while her husband works or carouses with his neighbor, played by the always likable Stanley Holloway. Many times, Ethel is a referee, managing her three mature children or stopping rows between her mother and Frank's sister, Sylvia. The cast also features John Mills as a neighbor courting Frank's elusive daughter, Queenie. While his character is a young man, I was surprised to learn that Mills was already in his mid-30s at the time and had already been in movies for about a dozen years. He is very solid as the salt-of-the-earth Englishman, his standard role until he graduated to playing stiff officers later in his career. Queenie, Frank's daughter, is played by the always feisty Kay Walsh, who was married to director Lean at the time. Queenie is ambitious for a richer lifestyle, and her personal choices lead to family disputes and some of the most dramatic moments in the film. While David Lean had helped direct Major Barbara, and in which we serve, this happy breed was Lean's first solo directing credit. It was also the first film he directed in color, an extravagant process in wartime England where only four color cameras existed. But he keeps things tight and well paced as 20 years of family life pass by. I was drawn to the film to see Lean's early work, and it was intriguing to watch his choices and instincts as a director. The film opens with shots of London panning from the Thames and over row housing to the new home of the Gibbons family. The sequence is strikingly similar to Laurence Olivier's famous opening for Henry V, also from 1944, which showed the Thames and London in medieval times. In our film, Lean uses transition in a tourist agent's window to show the passage of time and growing peacetime prosperity. There's a powerful sequence where Frank and Ethel are kept off screen while getting horrible news about a family tragedy as happy music plays ferociously on the radio.
Lean admitted the film was a learning experience for him and how to work with actors, but he was lucky enough to have pros like Johnson. And while Lean defensively dismissed this movie as a small domestic story, he successfully blends the personal and historic. A glimpse of what he'd do in Lawrence of Arabia, Bridge Around the River Kwai, and Dr. Zhivago. This Happy Breed was a hit in England upon release, though it wasn't released in the U.S. until 1947, after the success of Brief Encounter. And it still has a lot to recommend it today. The film offers an English version of American films Our Town and the Human Comedy. Each follows the concerns, challenges, and times of an everyday family. Of course, what's really compelling is how all these stories show the universal aspects of human experience. The clothes and technology will change, but the dynamics of human interactions are timeless. This happy breed provides a fine showcase for an ensemble cast, with each character being very well developed and some of the performers going on to greater fame and stardom. It shows off Noel Coward's writing skills and his skill with dialogue in a story with genuine affection for Londoners. It's got rare 1940s color, skillfully shot by frequent lean collaborator Ronald Neem. Finally, it lets you save a David Lean's directing touch in a more intimate film made before he became known for grand historical epics. This Happy Breed is available on Criterion DVD, but you can often stream it free here on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching and hope you enjoy this film. Don't forget to subscribe and come back soon to Waltz Flicks Picks.